I'm not trying to sound ugly or, you know, uh, hopeless there. That's just the reality that we all face. So they needed this protector, this one who would come. Now let me just read a little bit about what he said in Luke chapter 1. I'm going to pick up at verse 76. And he's talking here, the daddy, about his kid. Okay? Laying there in the crib, I'm sure. And he's prophesying over his son. So he says, and you, child, verse 76. 76, and you child will be called prophet of the highest, for you will go before in the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. I like that, to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. I want to just focus there for a moment on that one verse where he says in verse 78, with the day spring which from on high has visited us. Any of you ever been out at the dawn, it's still dark, and you've seen the first rays of light on the horizon? Have you done that? You just see pink that thing just pops out there. Uh, just a ray of light. That's that day spring. And that's what John's talking about. Now what's the day spring? That little boy right there. See, the little kid he's talking about is his son. Prophesied in the very temple itself. By the miraculous visitation of Gabriel the angel. And he would be like the first ray of light in all of that darkness of Israel and the people bringing hope and light to show the way to who? To Jesus. Because you see, John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way. You know, I think it's a tragedy that people today, they approach Christmas with no preparation. I mean, what are you going to do in your life if you never learn to enjoy the journey along the way and to learn what a joy and a help it is in your life to prepare things. Let me give you an example. These ladies preparing food. I mean, I watch my wife prepare sometimes food. It amazes me. She'll be whistling around the house, singing, being happy. She enjoys that. Now, the great thing about it, I enjoy eating it. <laughs> oh, how I look forward to it. As those <laughs> smells waft through the kitchen. And I watch my wife in there, and she's having fun, and she's cooking, and that just amazes me sometimes. Now, I don't like to cook. Okay? I'm just being honest. You don't want me to cook. You want to live. You do not want to die. I, I don't like cooking, but I enjoy watching her cook. <laughs> you know, for one thing, I know what's coming. No, 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 I, I can anticipate but all that preparation that she goes through, I mean, that's, you know, to some people, that's laborious, that's just ridiculous, you know, and I'm not going to go through that, but she enjoys it. And because of the effort she makes, you eat some of this great food that we have, and many of you other ladies and men as well, that prepare that food on pop up night on Cowboy Church. Because of people who enjoy preparation. And I want to encourage you this Christmas season, as you approach the holiday, Take a little time to prepare. Prepare. Don't just, just kind of fall into it and then hope you survive. You know? Everybody's griping around you in the family. I went home to a family reunion one time at Christmas, and I had three uncles there that were all about atheists. And we were trying to talk to them about Jesus, and one of them said, Ah, you know, when you die, you're just meat for the worms. That's all. I almost came out of my chair. My mom was already on me. She said, you got to shut up. We don't want to hear you going on. It's, it's Christmas time. You know what I'm saying. We just sort of stumbled into that. We weren't prepared. I don't know that you can prepare for that, but we weren't prepared. And I want to share with you tonight that a little preparation goes a long way. And not only that, you can enjoy the preparation. You can, I think that God wants us to enjoy the journey along the way. Amen. He wants us to have a good time with it. He wants us to understand that there's blessings in that preparation. Let me give you some examples of some things you, you might do. We have a nativity scene sitting down here on the highway. 
on the other highway, go over to 145, and go to a Baptist chapel down there, and you'll see out in front of it this beautiful nativity scene. It's bigger than life. My wife, Roseanne, painted that 25 years ago, and it sat in the town at Lake Havasu City for 20 years. I was told one year they tried to take it down and they had a riot in the town. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's the most realistic I've ever seen. And I'm not just saying that because it's my wife that painted it. I helped to get the pieces for her back then and all that, but she did the painting. And you know, you can stand back from that. And we had people in Lake Havasu City, Arizona during those years that would come at Christmas time, all pent up with stress, all dealing with problems, family and all of that. They would drive up into the parking lot where that stood, and we had music piped out there, and there would be 10 or 15 cars every night of people sitting out there just staring at it and looking at it. What were they doing? They were preparing for Christmas. I walked out there one night, and people were there in an a long period of time. I went up, and kind of knocked. I thought something was wrong, and this lady, she put the window down, she said, uh, are you the pastor around here or what? I said, well, yeah, I think I am. <laughs> And she said, well, I come out here every night because my little daughter makes me. I get off work and she makes me drive up here and sit in this lot and listen to this music and watch that nativity scene for at least an hour every night. <laughs> she said, do you mind? I said, mind? That's why it's here. See, she was preparing her family. She was preparing that little girl. She was preparing herself for a good Christmas that year. And that's, you know, use that, you can use that as an example. There are other displays in our area that you might go to. Prepare yourself. Get a little bit prepared. Here's another thing you might do. Do something fun and good for someone else Amen. at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Think of somebody you know. Now, you don't want to go around there and, you know, like you're offering them a bunch of stuff and you're the great one and you're here to help the poor little pitiful person have a good Christmas. But rather, it's find some way to kind of do it either in secret, maybe they don't even know about it, or in a way that's empathetic, not sympathetic, but empathetic, where you feel with them so that they're not embarrassed, and then sort of slip it in, amen? And find a way to help someone in a way that honors themselves, their self-respect and their dignity, so that they don't feel like, you know, it's just somebody coming back with another basket. And those are fun. But it's somebody who really cares about them and has shown it. And he was even willing to be anonymous to help them if need be. Pray about that. That's a great way to prepare for Christmas. And start preparing. Another good thing you can do at Christmas time is come to Calvary Church. Amen? Amen. Come to Calvary Church. Get yourself geared up. Say, well, you know, but, uh, you know... How does that help me? Well, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the words of Christ. The more we're subjected to the word of God, the more we listen to the good things of God, the more encouragement and hope that God gives us. Yeah. And the more ability we have to have genuine, authentic faith in our lives. So as you hear the word of God, as we shared some tonight, you know, from Zacharias in Luke chapter 1, God can use that to encourage you. And build hope into your heart so that if something bad does happen, and it can, if something difficult does come down the pike, it's not as hard for you to handle it. There's a more, you have more resources. You have more strength. You have the ability. Another thing you can do at Christmas time is to be close to family and friends. Be close to family and friends. You say, no, I don't like it now. <laughs> well, why would I want to do that? Well, that, could that be part of our problem here? <laughs> I mean, you know, at, at Christmas time, it's a good time as you prepare for the season to think about some of those grudges you've been holding for a long time. And it's time to get rid of it. Amen. You know, it's time to give that over to the Lord. Life is too short. You know, I was talking to a young girl one time in Oklahoma, and she hated her brother just hated him. And I knew he was kind of a bad guy in many ways too. I knew the guy and <laughs> I had tried to help him and talk to him. One time I walked into a room and he was literally beating his head against the wall until the blood was falling. Well, I knew the young man had a problem. And I tried to talk to him and put an arm around him and I tried.